You ever watch something and at the end of it, you feel like you ran a marathon, but then you realized you only moved about 10 feet? Yeah, that's how I felt at the end of episode three. And this one, this was an absolute pacing nightmare. Like literally, beginning of the episode, we pick up with the plot twist. And then they add another plot twist. And I was like, oh, what a twist. Where's this going? And then the plot twist twists even more. And they introduce mainstay villain of the X-Men universe. And I'm like, oh, shoot. This is going to happen. This is it. And then mainstay villain causes event to happen. And then <laughs> events start happening. And everything starts picking up. And then... The rest of the episode is filler. <laughs> like literally, mainstay villain of the X-Men universe. Um, yeah, we need you to leave now so that plot can happen. That's it. This is all. This was an entire episode of great action mixed with plot convenience. That's all this was. It was like crux of the first two episodes thing that was the crux of the first two episodes the MacGuffin of the episode um we're gonna get rid of you now because we need plot to happen and then major plot twist of the first two episodes that occurred we need that to happen that happened to one character we need that to now be erased so we can introduce new character and that my friends is literally the entire episode like this episode is 33 minutes i think 33 minutes with the credits this episode needed to be about an hour and a half <laughs> seriously like at least 45 minutes because you have no time to breathe and then i guess the writers at one point realized they were running out of time because they spent the last 10 minutes or so rushing through plot i mean they rushed through like three or four different plot lines and got like either moved them forward or got rid of them for consistent plot convenience that's it that's all this episode was it, it it's literally fast paced, paced plot convenience that's it it's a good up good action don't get me wrong i once again i'm shocked about the good action but one thing was with the first two episodes that we kind of didn't get with this episode when they were talking about morph being non-binary or uh, bisexual or whatever it was yeah they they they're hinting at it a little bit too hard and they're hinting at it with uh one of my favorite characters in all of x-men they're uh getting a little bit too they're, they're starting to walk that line and i'm not liking the line bro <laughs> like, i don't like where it's going so i'm just saying feel free to shut that down because y'all weren't going that route really with the first two episodes now you're trying to sneak this crap in and it's not it's, it's not it's effing up the flow anyway but yeah Perfect. other than that like i said action is very very well done like the 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 way they're do the way they did the the scenes and it's the colors the the situations of the fight like you know the the you you really felt like the team was in uh dire straits like they they really looked outmatched and it was it was refreshing because you know you expect them to just you know be dominating and everything and they really looked like they were out of their element and outmatched and i i really I really did enjoy that i really did enjoy that aspect of it i did enjoy the aspect of uh once again the re the relationship dynamics they even though they they were so fast paced like you could really catch up to it it was one of those like you had, i had to watch it twice just to catch up on the relationship dynamics you know you could feel cyclops you could feel his emotional journey in in this episode whereas with everything else that was the only thing that really popped out there was no like real character moments outside of cyclops and how he was feeling other than that like the rest of the episode was just like i said it just moved so fast you couldn't you there was no time to breathe like if you did if you don't watch the episode twice 
you know, you, you miss nuances, you miss small things in this episode that you kind of didn't miss with the first two episodes. And I feel like the first two episodes were written as one episode that they divided up, whereas this one was written as its own episode and it moved too fast. They really just, you know, it, it kind of reminded me of, it kind of reminded me of Bleach, like the anime Bleach or the manga, either way, like you read that and it's like, plot convenience after plot convenience after plot convenience after plot convenience to try to just move the story along and it you know while it's still good it's still there's just so much plot convenience and plot armor and i just yeah that was the only like i said there's only flaw with this episode was that and i'm doing my best not to spoil it uh, for anybody who hasn't watched it yet, but yeah, overall, out of five, if I was to give it a score out of five, this one was maybe a three out of five. It wasn't, it wasn't a great episode, but it wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm taking off, I would have given it a three point five, but I gotta take off point five because they start to act a little bit too funny with Morph. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, with that, let me know what you think. Have you caught up on the show? Have you have you watched any episodes? Are you are you up on episode three already? Have you checked it out yet? Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, with that, be safe, be good, and it's the Drunken Prime cracking open another beer and signing off.